Step 5. Entangled long baseline telescopy. Now we're going to present another very interesting application of quantum networks and distributed quantum states. What is long baseline interferometry, or LBI? It's a way of combining light from spatially separated telescopes in order to improve the resolution. We're going to denote the resolution by capital R. So the idea is here. We've got some celestial object that we would like to study and we would like to image. And we can collect the light that's coming, that's emitted from this object, by our telescopes over here. We have telescopes on the left and telescope on the right. And the distance between them is called the baseline, which we'll, which we'll call capital B. And we're assuming that the wavelength of the light is just a single value and we're going to denote it by lambda. In this scenario, the resolution is given by the following expression. It's the ratio of the wavelength to the baseline times 1.2. Since here, the resolution of the object means the smallest detail that we can resolve successfully. Meaning that if the resolution is smaller, this is better for us and we can image much smaller objects. So you can see that one way of resolving a further object or a smaller object is by increasing the baseline and moving the telescopes further away from each other. Now that we know what the basic setting is, let's see how we can actually compute some properties about the object. So we're going to consider, again, our celestial object over here, our telescope L, uh, telescope R, and the baseline B. As the light travels into the telescopes, we are assuming that the light traveling to the left telescope has to travel further. And the distance that it needs to cover is given by the following. It's B, the baseline between the telescopes, times sine theta, this angle over here. So if we drop an orthogonal line coming from the light beam uh, going to the left telescope until we hit the light beam coming to the right telescope, then it's the angle between that line and the horizontal. So the distance that the light needs to travel when going to the left telescope is given by B sine theta. This introduces a phase shift with respect to the right light beam. And the phase shift is denoted by phi and is given by the extra distance that it needs to cover, B sine theta, divided by the wavelength of the light, a lambda. Now, here we're assuming that we have a point source. So the single photon state that's arriving into these telescopes is a superposition between the state going to the right telescope and the state going to the left telescope. But as we said, there is a phase shift when the photon goes to the left telescope. And this phase shift is given by this complex phase over here, e to the i phi. Now determining what this phase shift is reveals a lot of information about the location of the object. So that's the central question we want to find out. How can we find out this phase shift over here? So what we can do is we can take the two light beams detected by the telescopes and bring them together and interfere them. But before we do that, there is one problem with our previous slide. And then that, that is that the state of the light is actually not coherent. Usually the sources have finite size. They are not just point sources. That means that we have a mixture of different photons produced at different locations of the source. And each of these photons has different phases. So all these different phases, they're mixing together and decreasing the off-diagonal terms in the density matrix representing the quantum state of the light. So we cannot describe our one photon state simply as a pure state psi we need to move into the density matrix picture, and the state is given by the following. Here the basis is this first column and the first row represent zero, zero state, meaning no photon in the left telescope and no photon in the right telescope. Here we have zero, one, so zero photons in the left telescope, one photon in the right telescope, and so on. And we see that the state is given by the following. We have one half and one half along the diagonals. And the off diagonals are given by this complex term V. And this term is usually called visibility. If we had a coherent, uh, coherent source, then here the magnitude of this term would be one. It would just be e to the i uh, phi. So let's go back to interfering the two lights coming into our telescopes. Here, 
we have simplified the picture and we have the left telescope on this side. It accepts the light and it brings it to a beam splitter. And so does the right telescope. It brings its light into the beam splitter, but it introduces a variable delay, delta. This introduces a phase shift, but we have control over this phase shift. And then we see the statistics of which detectors are clicking and how often they are clicking. So the probabilities of detection are the following. Getting a click at detector one, is given by the following expression. It's just one plus the real value of the product between the visibility and the introduced phase shift by our phase shifter here, divided by two. And the probability of detecting the photon at the detector two is a very similar expression, but instead of a plus, we have a minus over here. Now we can sweep through the various uh, values of delta and that way we can find out information about the visibility V, such as its amplitude and its phase. And then we can reconstruct the state of the light. Now, there are two major issues with this setup. The first one is phase noise. And this is introduced in the atmosphere by fluctuations of the density of the atmosphere. We can't really do much about that. On the other hand, we can do something about the second source um, of noise, and that's photon loss. If we don't get enough photons, we cannot um, accurately reconstruct our visibility V. So every photon loss that happens uh, inside the interferometer results in lower sensitivity of this approach. And this is where quantum networks are going to come in. This approach was proposed by Gottesmann in, and his collaborators in 2012, and it works as follows. Rather than interfering the light coming from the left and right telescopes directly, they chose the following approach. They chose to have two separate interferometers, one for the left telescope and one for the right telescope. But this time, they interfered the incoming starlight with um, an entangled photon pair created by an EPPS node. And the state of this uh, pair is given by the following. It's an equal, equal superposition of one photon flying to the right and one photon flying to the left with a variable phase given by delta. And then we have four uh, detectors in total, two for our left telescope and two for our right telescope. And depending on the statistics, how they click, what's their probabilities of detection, we can infer some information about the visibility. So that's the telescope L, and that's the telescope R. Now we can reconstruct the visibility by measuring the correlation between the measurements or their anti-correlation. What we mean by that is the following. The probability of observing correlated clicks, meaning that we get a click uh, on, on detector L1 and click on detector R1, or we get click detector L2 and click on the detector R2, is given by the following expression. So it looks very similar to what we saw previously um, uh, using inter direct interference between the left light and the right light, coming from the left telescope and the right telescope. The probability of observing an anti-correlated clicks, that means detector L1 clicks and detector R2 clicks, or detector L2 clicks and detector R1 clicks, is given by the following expression. Again, this should look familiar from our previous slides. The crucial point here is that the light itself coming from the celestial object that we're trying to image does not have to travel all the way from one telescope and the other telescope and meet in the middle at a single beam splitter. That means that we can extend our baseline as long as we have the ability to distribute end-to-end -end, uh, entangled pairs over large distances. And this way, the authors were able to eliminate or reduce the effect of photon loss on the sensitivity of um, LBI using entangled pairs.